I'd like to uh, call this uh, regular meeting of the Corville City Council to order on February 9th, 2021 via Zoom. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Foster. Present. Gross. Here. Wynn. Present. Dodds. Present. Goodrich. Here. Okay. All council members are present, as is the mayor, city clerk, city administrator, city attorney, and several other city staff members. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda with um, two uh, 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 changes. First, I would like an add an item, um, um, 5A I'm calling it, after item five, we'll have uh, one additional item before city citizens comments, and that's a, a project better together update presentation. And I would like to delete item 13, A, B, and C. I'd entertain a motion and a um, second. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Gross and seconded by Goodrich with those changes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, aye. thank you. Agenda's approved. Item number four is our Go Red campaign, American Heart Association um, presentation. And I believe we have Julie Fitzpatrick and perhaps Renda Green Fishman with us tonight. Brenda and Julie, welcome. Hi there. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, we really appreciate this opportunity to speak with all of you. And I have to say your uh, commentary about wearing red was quite funny to me. Um, <laughs> I know I know that's not a common color in these parts. Um, maybe on, on one side of town, but not the other. And coming from a Hawkeye family, it was really challenging for me to um, expand my wardrobe to, to red. But since I've been involved for a long time with Go Red, I do have some red pieces here. So again, I'm Julie Fitzpatrick. My spouse, uh, Jan Jensen and I uh, have lived in Coralville for 20 years. And I just wanna thank all of you for the tremendous work you do. We love it here and we are grateful um, to live in such a, a wonderful community. Um, a little bit about Go Red for Women. I became involved with Go Red for Women about 16 years ago and I'm a physical therapist and very um, devoted to uh, health and wellness. And uh, the mission of Go Red for Women was to educate women on heart health. And it was just a, um, a passion of mine and it seemed to fit. But it became very personal to me when about six years after I started my um, work with Go Red that I had a daughter who was born with a congenital heart defect. And thankfully, our daughter Janie is a 10-year-old, very healthy girl today, but it wasn't without um, a lot of interventions. And thankfully, the research advancements really basically saved her life. So she went through two open heart surgeries and is a 10 year old at Wickham Elementary and doing great. Um, we are so grateful. So I, in my experiences over the past 16 years, am very passionate about this movement. Um, Go Red for Mo Women is a national movement that actually started 16 years ago. And locally here, we've been involved with our local chapter for that amount of time. And um, really the, the mission of Go Red for Women is to educate and empower women on heart health and to advance research. And the reason it's so important is heart disease has always been known as the number one killer for men, but it was not as widely known as being the number one killer for women. And so the American Heart Association um, really has done a tremendous job of educating, um, empowering, um, helping women understand that you know 80% can be changed with life or can be prevented with lifestyle change, but one in three women die from heart disease, and the same is, holds true for men. And so it is a really important um, uh, that we know this, that we understand there are things we can do, and our um, local chapter here is very devoted to helping spread the word and educate others on, on, uh, on what we do. Um, so locally, we have a very popular luncheon that we do every um, year. This year, we had to do it digitally. Uh, very well attended. It's at the Coralville Marriott. And then the month of February, we do a lot of awareness training uh, throughout our community. And um, you've probably seen red lights throughout town. And 
um, some of our missions at uh, different uh, locations here to spread the word. So we want to thank you for your involvement in that. I've had the pleasure of working with Renda Green Fishman, who I'm sure many of you know. Um, we've been co-chairing this for the last three years, and I know she wants to share her story and um, also say a few words. So thank you again. We really appreciate your time. And the red looks awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Julie. Yes. Thanks, Julie. Hello. You as a fearless high parent, you would be all right with my wet, my my green. So sorry about that. For sure, that. I'm giving you a pass. Absolutely, all right. it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, Mitch, I don't know if I can because both <laughs> my kids went to West High and um, never had red in my wardrobe actually until they went to college, and both of their schools are red. So, I have also inherited a bunch of red now with that. So, might Excellent. change with you someday too. <laughs> So um, my name is Renda Green Fishman, I'm the co-chair for the Go Red Luncheon. I was very fortunate to grow up in Coralville, so thank you very much for allowing us to come here tonight to share the message. The Go Red movement for women movement and the work of the American Heart Association um, became very personal to me when my father had a sudden cardiac arrest and was saved by CPR. As the past sheriff of Johnson County, my father, Bob Carpenter, had a very high stress career as a public servant. He's always on call and a very hard worker and always put others first. And my mother was actually the person who performed CPR on him when he had his cardiac arrest. And it was a life-saving effort from her that gave the gift of more time with him, which was an additional year and a half. Um, so at this time, I really cherish, that was the time that we cherished really forever. And really, I'm compelled by his memory to keep, keep um, his memory alive and help fight the disease that ultimately took his life. The good news is, is 80% of heart disease and stroke events may be prevented by lifestyle changes in education. And since the onset of the Go Red for Women, um, you know, we really are encouraging everyone to take charge of their heart health through healthy lifestyle choices, knowing their health numbers, and just being familiar with the signs and symptoms of heart disease um, that are specific to women. And the results are telling about 90% fewer women are dying from heart disease and stroke each year because of these efforts. So our ultimate goal is to move the needle so that we are no longer the number one cause of death in women. So this February, our community has joined together to spread the message of heart health in a big way. Through turning our town red, the shining of beautiful red lights throughout Iowa City, Corville, North Liberty. You might see them in the dressing window front, storefronts in the downtown district. And then High V has a really big fundraiser effort too. And it's just amazing to see this community and helping the Go Red for Women share the message of living a heart healthy life. So we really appreciate City of Porterville for being part of this. And we are thrilled to see the River Landing roundabout shining bright red. And we hope it serves a reminder to all those who see it to think about the heart health and know that there is a group right here dedicated to educating and empowering our community on heart health. So thank you very much. Thank you, Renda. And again, thank you, Julie. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, pretty exciting how the community is getting behind this, this uh, movement. And uh, it's great to see the private sector getting involved and, and the, the roundabout's gonna look great in red for mm -hmm. uh, a short time. <laughs> thank you. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. And Renda, tell Colby and Connor I say hi. <laughs> I will. We'll have to get you some red. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay good night now you're welcome to stay as long as you want but you, you, so. okay um, I'd like to move on then to item number five which is uh, another uh, great item which is we're going to recognize some volunteer coaches in our in our rec program at the at the city of Coralville you know um, I think Coralville's always been highly recognized as a great youth sports programming and, and adults as well but tonight we're honoring um three youth volunteer coaches that um the the programming that we do at the at the Corville rec center wouldn't be possible without without a many many volunteers and um they all need to be recognized and we we wish we could recognize them all but um through a through a selection process we identified uh three that are going to be um uh, discussed and, and awarded tonight and um, very, very, very duly deserved, I must say, reading their biographies. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Sherry Proud, our Director of Parks and Recreation, to give us a little more insight um, on the awards and tell us about the recipients. Thanks, Mayor. 
Um, this is our second year of giving out um, this award. And it's really great to be able to recognize some of our coaches. And in particular, I'm excited about Whitney and Tanya and Keith Kamani um, because I got to know them. I got to know Tanya and her girls way back when I started coaching softball with the Iowa City Jaguars. So um, it's exciting to have them join our program, volunteer in our program, and just be such great role models um, for our volleyball players. So we're excited about that. So the way this is selected, we send an email out. Um, Eric Dinison and Jordan Blyle with our athletics um, um, program send an email out and ask for um, nominations. And these are taken and then we determine um, a winner through the amount of nominations, number of sports programs he or she coached and letters of support are some ways that we make, make those um, uh, determinations. And Eric and Jordan write that the year 2020 was difficult for many in our community and in our state, everyone was presented with challenges and they did not expect to have to deal with, with this throughout the year. Um, Tanya Kimani and Whitney rose to the challenge of coordinating their coaching efforts to provide our local youth with a positive recreation experience in a safe way. It is for this reason that um, myself, Eric and Jordan would like to recognize Tanya Kimani and Whitney as our 2020 volunteer coaches of the year. And a little bit about these three wonderful women um, the fact that it's a volleyball sport is pretty cool. Um, they, um, Whitney and Key are sisters and Tanya as their mom, both Tanya and Whitney have been coaching with the Recreation Center since 2009 when Kimani began playing volleyball. Tanya has coached t-ball and softball also through um, us and at also, as I mentioned before, with the Iowa City um, Jaguars Club softball program. Whitney is an Upper Iowa University grad with a management major. She's an authorized volleyball coach coach in the state of Iowa and coached volleyball at Iowa City West for three years. She has um, coached competitive club volleyball through USCA AV and is currently coaching her daughter and other amazing young athletes at the Boost Volleyball Club. Key is in her first official season of coaching. This is her second year volunteering with Coralville Parks and Rec and her first year as club volleyball coach. She will be coaching alongside her sister Whitney at Boost and they both played volleyball at Iowa City West. Go Trojans! And both went on to play at the collegiate level. When off the court, Tanya plays for the, or works for the Iowa City Community School District as an attendant secretary and bookkeeper. Whitney is the billing manager for Psychiatric Associates, and Kimani is a paraeducator for the Iowa City Community School District and is a sophomore studying at Kirkwood Community College. So they are all on here with us, so we can give them a wave and a big thank you. We are going to be asking. Mayor, um, when it's safe and we all feel comfortable, we have plaques for these ladies and would love to get pictures with, with Mayor and celebrate them. Thank you. Absolutely. Congratulations. Congratulations, uh, Key, Whitney, and, and Tanya. What a, what a great testimony to the programming that we have at the Rec Center. So would any of you like to say a few words? Um, I just want to say thank you uh, for the opportunity. We've been doing this for a number of years, and uh, we love the sport. We're just passing on our passion for it and hopefully impacting players along the way. So thank you, uh, and we'll continue to volunteer. <laughs> Great. I look forward to the photographic opportunity coming up. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you, thank you Sherry. Appreciate it. Welcome. Yep. Okay. Well, I think we'll move on then through our agenda. And item uh, 5A is uh, an update from the Project Better Together program. Um, Mark Nolte, and I think he's going to be joined by Kim Casco and Kate Moreland are going to speak to us this evening. There they are. Mark, uh, Kate, and Kim, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I think Mark can kick us off here. Is she on? Sure. I'm here, yeah. And do we have, uh, we've got a PowerPoint deck. I don't know if we, if you pull that up on your end or you need us to pull that up. Awesome, there we go. All right, so 
Um, so I'm going to kick things off here. Thank you um, for having us this evening. Our main intention is to share out some of the successes of the Project Better Together this past uh, trying year and to thank you all for your support. But before we dive into that, we just want to do a quick refresher on what Project Better Together is and how it came about. Uh, next slide, please. So Project Better Together was launched in May of 2020 uh, as a community-wide effort to help Johnson County recover from the impacts of COVID-19 and reshape an even stronger and more resilient future. It is comprised of various organizations from across the county covering various sectors of our community from government, to healthcare, uh, to education, business, uh, that all work together across the silos to enact both short-term targeted relief actions as well as develop longer-term forward thinking solutions that'll move us towards that renewed future state. Uh, the initiative is currently being led by the four economic development organizations, the Iowa City Area Business Partnership, Iowa City Area Development Group, Iowa City Downtown District, and Think Iowa City, and being project managed uh, by Mark Nolte. And it is guided by a steering committee, um, next slide please, that is over 30 leaders strong, um, including your own uh, Mitch Gross and Kelly Hayworth. And um, really the, the next slide, please. The, the bulk of the activities that the steering committee has, has been guiding uh, has been uh, more in the short-term targeted actions category because we're still, I think, very much in, in relief mode. Um, but the hope is that those short-term mm -hmm. actions will build upon uh, one another and move into long-term recovery streams of work that'll get us towards that uh, collective vision for our future. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this diagram represents those various sectors I just spoke about that PBT touches uh, and was our attempt, you know, early on in catalog cataloging the various relief efforts that were going on in each sector. Um, besides having the, the steering committee that guides that overall effort, we are also building what we what we call our coalition of the willing, which is individuals you know, from across the community that are engaging um, in all of this work. And we've been, been able to, I think, accomplish a lot collectively. And I'm going to turn it now over to Mark to, to share some of those accomplishments. Thanks, Kim. If you go to the next slide, please. So, you know, as Kim said, we, it's been a lot of uh, some little things and lots and, and some other kind of big larger efforts. One of the biggest was the holding our own shop local program this fall. And we appreciate the city of Corville for helping support that. Through that effort, we were able to keep uh, $823,000 in local spending in the community. And part of that funding then went back to support BIPOC and immigrant businesses through a, a grant program of which seven of the 33 grants were made to Coralville businesses. Uh, and then trying to find ways just to support uh, our healthcare workers. We did an adopt a healthcare worker program where 725 healthcare workers either self nominated themselves or were nominated. Uh, we're working on food security. We've done a lot of webinars, a lot of newsletters, just trying to keep everyone together, keep people uh, updated on what's happening around uh, all these issues and try to focus on our economy and supporting people that are most in need. Uh, a big part of that a big was the neighborhood nests that were really largely led by um, Jennifer Banta on Kim's team and Deb Duggan case and, and a whole bunch of volunteers. Just in response to schools being online, trying to make sure there were safe, engaging places uh, with wireless internet or with internet for, for students to go and, and participate in. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, we did, we distributed yard signs one night to healthcare workers. Um, that was a fun project. We did a halftime video where we got um, some of the athletic department coaches, uh, Coach Jensen did a video, some former Hawkeye athletes did videos just to support our healthcare workers. There's a, a program going on right now to support our educators that Kate uh, can touch on in a minute. Uh, we did a big press conference this summer on the importance of wearing masks. Uh, we supported our black peers during the demonstrations this summer. We were out there every night um, advocating and, and attending and being part of the protest and trying to keep things safe and productive. And we were out in the next morning, a lot of times cleaning up graffiti, you know, trying to just do anything we could to make sure that we supported the voice of those um, that were protesting, but also uh, work with our business owners who were uh, impacted by that. Uh, after the derecho, we, uh, we all went up to Cedar Rapids and worked for days trying to help them. Um, people like Supervisor Porter and others put together a giant uh, food pantry almost overnight in a big warehouse up there. So it was great to see Johnson County uh, doing our part to help in Lynn County as well. 
and just a lot of conversations with a lot of groups about how to keep the businesses going. Uh, and we did a big COVID uh, day, free day of COVID testing at the Corville Marriott. We really appreciate the city of Corville for helping that uh, with the parking and access to the, the hotel. That was incredible. Uh, so a lot of little things, big things, but we're just trying to find ways that we can be supportive um, and get this economy and get our community through these this trying time. And I'll turn it, oh, I guess a couple, if you can go to the next slide. Just we continue to, to bring the people that are working together in housing and food security and child care. They're, they're having weekly meetings, talking about what more needs to be done, doing some need assessment works, working with United Way right now, continuing to support the education and NEST efforts, trying to find other ways that we can support BIPOC and immigrant businesses through this all. And then the other big thing we're working on right now is making sure that as we get more doses of the vaccine that we're working with Johnson County Public Health and our healthcare partners to be encouraging people who can get the shot to get their shot when their time comes and overcome some of the stigmas and, and concerns, especially in the minority populations where there, there might be a little distrust of uh, the medical community, just working on making sure that we're, we're providing a positive message there. A couple of the other things we've done uh, and continue to do, if you go to the next slides, these just show some, we've done some uh, surveys to business owners uh, just to kind of see how things are going. This was kind of an area wide one. The next slide is one that was just downtown Iowa City, but the bottom line through this is just how resilient uh, our, our local businesses are. Uh, we've done a lot of work trying to make sure that our businesses are getting the PPP program, both the first and second one. Our local banks have been phenomenal in supporting them. Just trying to find any resources we can and bring those to our county. The next round of uh, kind of rent support will be coming out soon. So we need to make sure that we we're doing all we can to help both landlords and renters get as much of that rental support into this area as we can. So those are some of the things that, that we've been working on and I'll let Kate kind of finish up and talk about what's next. You can go to the next slide. So just, uh, we have two slides left here, just some lessons learned. Obviously um, a lot of trust was needed and continues to be needed during this process and, and really the power of collaboration is what we uh, really have seen the benefit from. Uh, we know we need to be agile. I think we learned early on uh, some weeks we would, weren't sure what the issue was going to be and by Friday it presented itself and we all had to deal with it. So things are changing so fastly over the last several months. Um, so we often shift between our response to things and, and relief mode and then but we also have to look ahead at, at inclusive economic recovery. So we'll be doing a lot of uh, planning and working uh, with communities on, on how we can assist moving forward as we move into recovery. We also know we need to be inclusive. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Megan. She's been great at being part of a countywide group that's looking at how we can support our BIPOC businesses. We think there's a huge opportunity uh, to um, help more businesses start up after this time. We have some unemployed uh, folks that are looking for oppor new opportunities. And so we wanna make sure we have the resources available for them. We also need to make sure we have a you know, diverse set of voices at the table as we look at those uh, recovery plans and thinking about that inclusivity. Um, certainly the project has allowed us to have synergy across the silos. We have leaders from all of our major organizations and um, elected officials. And so being able to have those conversations I think have been incredibly valuable during this time. Uh, we've been able to support one another um, different industries have needed different support at different times. And uh, I think one of our lessons really has been we are better together. Um, there's uh, during the, a time of crisis when you can lean on others and, and get input from a lot of different folks, we know the results are, are gonna be better. So thank you to all of you, Kelly, uh, Mitch, who have um, stepped up every Friday. We're always amazed at, at the attendance and, and the ability for people to make that time count and, and show up. So, and then the last slide, uh, is just looking forward. So like Mark said, helping businesses really take advantage of this latest round of, of PPP and especially reaching out to those underserved businesses that maybe were left out of the first round and, and, and are discouraged. So a lot of uh, outreach happening there, supporting vaccine adherence efforts, really supporting the, the um, Johnson County Public Health there's only so much they can do with the supply they're getting. So we're, we're trying to, to also support them um, and be able to kind of echo their messages out to employers who are asking, you know, when is it gonna be our turn? Um, supporting our educational system. I mean, they were throwing a curveball two weeks ago. Mitch's and Matt Degner get on every Friday and let us know the status there and how we can help as a business community. 
Um, and then obviously some of the mental and emotional mental health issues that have come out of this connecting resources to, to kids. We're, we have a great group working together right now on um, supporting Johnson County or supporting junior high kids um, uh, with the Iowa City Schools. We know that mentorship is gonna be really important and um, being able to connect them back to their school system and, and really give them some encouragement. So a great group is working on, on that effort. And then also a, a more region-wide effort called Show Your Love to Educators that just launched here in February. So for the month of February, we want people to reach out to their kids' teachers, encourage your students to do that, um, all, all school staff. Um, they, they need some love too. We did that for healthcare workers and now we're doing it for, for our educators and our school staff. Um, and then, like Mark said, just recovery work in these areas of housing, food, childcare, uh, and the economy overall. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of, uh, this is gonna be a period of time as we recover from this, but there's also a huge opportunity during this time, I think, to, to look ahead. And so that long-term vision for our community will be something that we continue to work with our partners on. Uh, and you can always find more information about everything at icareatogether.com. So thank you again for all your support and we're happy to answer any questions. Well, well, thank you, uh, Kate, Kim, and Mark. Um, how impressive is that? I mean, it's just another great example of the wonderful community that we all live in in this in this Johnson County area. Um, I, I'd be willing to say there are very few communities that do as much during these difficult times as what you folks are doing for us. Um, my, I'm almost speechless when I see everything that you've done. You know, I I hear about each of them, but boy, you put them on a PowerPoint presentation and read them. It's amazing everything that you've done and the great job you've done in hitting all the all the pinch points that, that are so important, inclusive, in, inclusivity and, and all the other important um, characteristics of everything that you do. And, and a shout out to all your team members and, and in Coralville for Kelly and Mitch for leading this. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they, the council has a few comments as well. Well, I just want to start off by saying, I, I think the task that Mark has leading this group is understated and it's, it's a huge undertaking. And you know, there's so many different factions uh, in the community. And I think he's just done a brilliant job of bringing everybody together. And I have to give a huge shout out to Nancy and Kate and Kim as well. And just the, um, you know, it's, it's one of those meetings where all, we all have too many meetings, but it's, it's never one where you leave thinking that was a waste of time, that there's progress that, that happens. And, um, and it, it is the cliched saying of better together. And, I, and not even that, I think, I think that we're getting better together. And that's why I've just been impressed that it just seems like a lot of the different stakeholders have put their own personal agendas aside to really come together for the greater good. So I appreciate uh, that it's a, it really is a pleasure to be part of it. I just wanted to share one little anecdote of how um, responsive the group is too. We had, uh, we had kids here at West who did not have hotspots and the district was just out. I mean, they were absolutely out. And I make two calls to Kim or to Kate and Mark, and we have hotspots literally the next day. Uh, I, I haven't asked how they got them, where they got them, and, and that, but it's just, you know, that type of responsiveness for real issues, uh, it just, it's deeply appreciated. So, uh, as I said, I'm honored and proud to serve on this committee, and thank you all for what you've done to make it happen. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the great things about it also is just the education that um, we can all get of what's going on in the community. And all of our major medical um, institutions are participating along with all of the um, education folks that um, uh, Mark has mentioned. The president of Kirkwood has participated along with University of Iowa officials and Board of Regents members. And it's really interesting to hear what's going on in each of those sectors. And it help, is helpful to our staff to be able to bring that information back uh, directly, what is happening in those areas and not hear just the rumors of what's happening, but really hear the firsthand experiences and what we can do to help or how we can take advantage of some of those opportunities as well. So thank you very much for what you're doing. I agree. Thank you so much for coordinating and communicating and carrying us through this time. We really appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And I'd appreciate, and I think we all would, um, receiving a, a copy, electronic copy of that PowerPoint, if that'd be okay. There's a lot of information on there. I'd like to go back and kind of digest. We have that, Mayor, so we'll send that out this evening. That'd be great. I appreciate that. 
Thanks. You guys are doing a great job. Make us very proud to live here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Okay. Moving on to um, item six, which is citizen comments. This is the, the item on the agenda for folks to speak to us this evening on items that aren't already on our agenda. Um, the ground rules are always the same. We ask people to try and limit their uh, comments to five minutes. And um, if uh, try, please try not to repeat what other folks have already said. And um, uh, I know there are folks here this evening that would like to speak to us. So John, you can let them in and Now, Council Member Maza, Maza here, Salee, from City of Iowa City, and also the Interim Executive Director of the Center for Worker Justice of Eastern Iowa, sent us all a letter this evening. And Maza, would you like to, to start or? Uh, you know, I'd rather make the, the resident to start first, if that possible, and I will be the last one. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I see two other guests on, on my screen. Bijou, uh, excuse me if I if I misstate your name, but Bijou Mali and then Sarah Barron. Bijou, would you like to go ahead? Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Bijou Mali Abo, and um, I'm here to kind of translate for the uh, uh, core of your residents that are here to speak about some issue. Um, I'm not sure. I know there's three already that I'm helping log in. I'm not sure if you're logged in or not. Is that okay if I also speak? Well, um, you know, if we if we don't have the people um, who you're here to translate for yet, Bijou, I can go ahead and talk about. I'd like to let them speak first if they are available. John Hines, are there others waiting to to join us? Mohammed, you are on our on my screen. Hello. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Hey, uh, this is Mohammed Ahmad. I'm a resident of Corville. I want to take you back to the ratio the ratio time when the ratio hits back on uh, August August 10. I called the city because of that time. Uh, I did not have power for four or five days. Uh, we didn't have food at home. And we were trying to get help from the city of Provence since we are resident of the city and we pay property tax, so we pay tax to the city. But unfortunately, we were turned down. During that same time, other people like us who were affected by the ratio living in Iowa City, they got all the kind of help. So, uh, the city of uh, Iowa City helped those who needed. The city of Coralville does not provide any kind of assistance to the resident who need the assistance. So my question is, uh, is this city 
the city of the rich people who those who are running the city they think uh, nobody lives here needs assistance okay and also we know that the cities across america they got money from the federal government especially during this covid city of iowa city is being authorizing the money uh to help their residents who need who need help how is the city of coralville helping uh those who need help thank you thank you who else would like to speak to us Yeah, Luke, if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I want to speak in, I speak French, yeah. Mitch, you're up. Yeah. Uh, bonsoir, uh, je m'appelle Luc Nzouzi. Uh, J'habite uh, au 931, 22 e Avenue, uh, à Coralville. Je participe à cette réunion pour vous demander de l'aide. Depuis cette pandémie, nous souffrons énormément et nous avons des problèmes de paiement de nos factures. Euh, certains propriétaires de maisons nous menacent de payer pour quatre mois précédents alors que l'État avait déjà tout payé, avait tout, a tout supporté. Et... Ceci est dû au fait que nous, nous sommes immigrants et nous avons des problèmes de communication pour raison de langue aussi, parce que beaucoup ne connaissent pas, ne parlent pas anglais. Euh, nous, nous ne savons pas où aller ou à qui recourir pour demander de l'aide, parce que nous sommes limités, nous sommes bloqués de par la langue. Dans cette ville de Coralville, on ne sait pas à quelle porte euh, toquer. Et nous sommes comme ça nombreux qui avons des problèmes, des besoins. Nous avons pratiquement les mêmes besoins. Nous traversons les mêmes problèmes. Et nous, nous, nous ne recevons aucune aide de la part de notre conseil municipal dans, euh, ou du gouvernement ou du conseil municipal pour, donc, pour notre ville de Coralville. Donc, euh, nous, nous recourons parfois à la ville voisine, à Iowa City, par exemple, euh, parce que ici chez nous, à Coralville, euh, nous ne sommes pas aidés, pratiquement. Donc, s'il vous plaît, nous, nous intervenons ou j'interviens personnellement pour que désormais, nous ayons de l'aide de, de la part du conseil municipal. Merci beaucoup. Can translate that. Um, uh, my name is Luke Nzinga. I live at uh, 931 22nd Avenue, Corville. Um, I stand here in front of you asking for your help. Really, since the pandemic, um, we are suffering with problem of paying and catching up with our bills. Some people also are facing landlord issues who um, intimidate them in asking them to pay rent for previous four months, even though it has been paid either by covered by the government or we paid it. And we also have proof that they are forcing us to repay four more months. Uh, this is due, uh, this is because we don't, we are immigrants and we don't speak English well, we speak other languages and for lack of communication due to language barrier. And also because we do not know where to turn to for help in our city of Corville. There are many of us with the same needs and problems that we are going through and we do not receive any help from our own city, from the city council and our government here in our city of Corville. We are reaching out um, to neighborhood cities like Iowa City for help, knowing that we have our own city. Please do something to help us here in our own city in Corville, as well like other cities. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Yeah, 
Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Hey. So, um, hi, my name is Myra, and I'm the community organizer at the Center for Worker Justice. And I just wanted to kind of give an example of like what the process is if somebody were to miss a payment or not be able to pay for their water um, in the city of Coralville. So, if my water bill is, for example, due on February 16th and I don't pay um, because I either can't, because I lost my job, I haven't been able to get a paycheck um, or my wages have been reduced, 10% um, of the water, 10 percent of the water cost will be added to my next day to the, the next day to my bill. Then I will get a late notice along with the new amount I owe, and then I will have 10 days to pay. After the 10 days, if I still have not been able to pay, I will get a disconnection notice posted on my door, and then I have a $20 fee added to, my, to the balance of my bill. Then after that, I have two days to pay. If I don't pay, my water will be disconnected the next day. At this point, not only will I have to pay my bill plus the late fees, I will also have to pay a reconnection fee. So if I wanted to get my water reconnected, a reconnection fee of $45 will be charged for reconnection if it's reconnected between the business hours of 7.30 a.m. to 7 or 3.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. But if for some reason I'm not able to make it during these times, I will be, I will have to pay then $75 if it's reconnected between 3.30 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. on weekdays weekends and all of the holidays and so that's just an idea of how you know some people cannot afford to be paying all of this and then um having to deal with the disconnection in the end and just like to say that all of this information was provided by the city of Coroval. thank you thank you hello there yes. is um there is uh two people that's still muted that want to speak one is jose and the other one in is becky matiabo so there's two people that i just they called me to say they're saying hello but nobody's um hearing them okay becky's on now she's muted Becky, if you can unmute yourself, please. Becky, to a new A. Hello, that is you. Be um, um, can, I, can she use my phone to talk or she's that on the phone you. with me? Yeah, that's uh, true. Okay, Euh, bonsoir, je m'appelle Becky Matiabo, j'habite à Coralville 52, je suis mère de trois enfants, j'ai vraiment besoin d'aide. Depuis la, la pandémie, ce qui a commencé depuis à la maison, je ne travaille pas. J'ai des billes à payer, des factures, la maison et tout ça. Ça me devient difficile de payer. Maintenant, je me, je me dis, où est-ce que je peux aller pour que je puisse avoir de l'aide C'est pourquoi je viens vers vous. Si vous pouvez nous aider et aider aussi d'autres personnes qui ont les mêmes cas que nous, qui sont à la maison, nous n'avons pas de travail. Si la, la mairie peut nous aider pour que nous puissions payer nos billes et dans nos, nos factures avec nos maisons. Je vous remercie. Uh, she said, my name is Becky Matiabo. 
I live at 1480 2nd Street, Corville, Iowa. I'm a mother of three and I really need help. Since, since the pandemic, it has been very difficult for me to pay my bill. It's been a few months since I've, I stopped working because of the pandemic and I have no money to pay my rent or my bill. Um, I would like assistance like everybody else who seek assistance to churches. I ask if the city council can assist me or direct me on how to find help for me and my family and other people that's in the same situation as me. Thank you. Thank you to and Becky. I think, uh, sorry, there are people are texting me to see if you guys can unmute them. Ibrahim Salim also is on. Yes. Um, hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Yes, we are. Thank you. We can hear you fine. All right. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Salim. Um, um, I have a family of four two kids and um, a wife and a come in one next month. Um, actually, I lost my job due to this pandemic, uh, 2020, and I've been, um, you know, just searching for a job and looking and, and, and it's, it's just been so rough. And, um, you know, being behind on all my bills and, and rent and all that. And I had to go to, you know, seek for a help went to, um, I heard, you know, people saying about the, the, the center of, uh, of work, you know, I went there and they, uh, you know, helped me filling out, you know, to, uh, Iowa, but, uh, finance authority, they helped me out for paying my rent for like three or four months. I can't remember. Um, and they helped me out, you know, paying my a few months of my uh, electricity and, and water bill. And, you know, then, you know, still can't find a job and, and, and went back to them and they say, you know, well, you know, they, they, they don't have any help for us, you know, as we are Coralville, you know, you know, residents. So we, we just seeking, you know, for kind of like an urgent help, you know, to help us with the rent and all that. Cause you know, it's, it's just been so rough. There's no jobs, you know, around. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations uh, on your uh, new arrival. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Hi. Uh, I also have two more people that called. I think Jose and Arafa Balu. So it's, I'm not sure if you can see them. And I think one of them, um, I think they're calling me to speak from my phone, if that's okay with you guys. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Jose, Pastor Jose, can you please speak your Est-ce que vous pouvez Bonsoir. parler? Bonsoir. Oui, je vous, je vous écoute, maman. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Pasteur José Pola. Pasteur José, est-ce que vous pouvez éteindre votre ordinateur? Il y a un écho qui se passe maintenant, c'est difficile qu'on puisse vous entendre. Okay. Ou soyez un peu euh, à l'écart de, de, de votre ordinateur ou autre. Ça va maintenant? Oui, ça va. Oui, bonsoir. Je m'appelle euh, Pasteur euh, José Nkola. Je vis ici à Coralville sur euh, 16 5e Avenue Street, Coralville, Iowa. Zip code de 52 241. Je suis venu aujourd'hui parce que j'ai besoin 
que vous puissiez nous aider avec les moyens pour payer nos loyers, maisons, même l'électricité. Ça fait un bon temps que je ne travaille pas parce que mon entreprise a fermé. Depuis la pandémie a commencé jusqu'à aujourd'hui. Et j'ai très difficile, mais se trouve un autre toujours à cause de la situation du COVID-19. J'ai une famille ici, je dois prendre charge et je n'y arrive pas pour manquer de moyens. Je représente encore nos sœurs et nos frères immigrants résidents à Coralville qui ne sont pas présents aujourd'hui parce qu'ils travaillent et qu'ils man qu man qu manifestent les mêmes besoins que moi. Ils ont beaucoup de difficultés à payer leurs factures des maisons et d'autres besoins depuis la pandémie. Nous sommes très nombreux ici à Coralville. Nous n'avons pas le soutien ici à Coralville. On même des renseignements, de savoir comment se trouver les sources, les ressources pour nos problèmes et nos besoins, nous demandons que qu'on puisse nous trouver une solution quelconque, tout comme les autres résidents de Iowa City qui, re qui, re euh, qui, reçoivent, qui reçoivent de l'aide par-ci, par-là. Merci beaucoup. Que mon Dieu vous bénisse. I will translate. I'm sorry, I try my best. Uh, hello, my name is Jose Nicola. I live here in Corville on 1616 5th Street, uh, Corville, Iowa, 52241. I came today because I need you to help us with the means. Sorry, I apologize. Um, uh, I came here because I need you to help us with the means to pay our rent, even our utility bills. It's been a while since I have been, I haven't been working because my company has closed since the pandemic started until now I do not work. It's very difficult for me to find another job because of COVID-19 situation. I have a family here and I have to take care of my family and I'm not able to do like that, look, do that due to lack of money and work. I'm also representing, representing our brothers and sister immigrants living in Corville who are not present here today and wish to be, but because they had to work, they couldn't make it. And who also show the same interests, same needs and encounter the same problem as me. And we have a lot of difficulty paying our bills and to meet our needs since the pandemic. There are many of us here in, Cor in Corville who do not have the support we need from our government, from our city council, or even find information or resources on how to find help for our problems and our needs. We ask if you can find some solution for us, just like other city, like Iowa City residents who are receiving help here and there. Thank you and may God bless you. Thank you. I'm also going to speak just because there's other people that want their, that excuse themselves to not show up because of work. Um, I'm also one of the community leaders. I help um, people in Iowa City, Corville, Note Liberty, City Rapids. So uh, the reason why people are calling me because I'm known for helping um, and they're not able to reach out. They really, really need help. Um, Iowa City has found a way to help the Iowa City residents and also Corville residents, but due to limitation and requirements and rules and regulations, they're not able to help more Corville residents. That's why we are. 
asking if you guys can please assist Corville residents in help. There really, really are a lot of issues and demands that we try to help and we're not able to meet that and you guys can. So if you guys can please look into this issue. There's so many people that are needing help. Um, I appreciate the CWJ and other organizations that have been, I saw the uh, Project Better Together that have been helping and CWJ and other parts and the food pantry is great as well, but there's so many other needs that they have in Corville. And because also they're immigrants and the lack of language, the language barrier, most speak French, Swahili, Lingala, Arabic, and other languages. They don't have anybody to translate or resources in those languages. They don't know where to turn to. They don't know where to go to find help. Maybe you guys might have help somewhere, but they don't know how to find it. If you can find a, a way to, to show them those resources so they can find help. Uh, if you guys can do these meetings or even just have other meetings to just meet with residents and speak with them um, so they can also know who you are and be familiar with you guys and be able to come to you for help. Uh, they will appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah? Hi, this is Sarah Barron from the Affordable Housing Coalition. Uh, thanks for making time in your meeting tonight to hear the voices of your residents. I hope that you really do hear them, hear their need, and know that they represent so many households in Johnson County who are really struggling. Um, early on in the pandemic, Coralville joined with other neighboring communities to suspend water shutoffs and late fees. Um, I think it goes without saying that this pandemic has dragged on much longer than any of us can bear. Um, but now is not the time to um, give up or return to our normal way of doing business. The need is greater than ever. Um, whether it is your faith or your values or your desire to show the world what Coralville is made of, um, I ask um, that you um, continue to look for the needs of these residents who are speaking tonight and others like them, that you continue to um, keep people's water on, help them to preserve their housing. Um, I have some good news for you. There's so much in this pandemic that we cannot control. There is something that you all can do that will make a real difference for families. That is leave their water on, um, and help them to access the resources that are coming from the federal government and make um, other Coralville resources available to people who will not be able to access that support. I know we talk a lot about the resources that are available to larger cities like Iowa City, and I hope that you realize that even Iowa City, in spite of the federal dollars that come through, has also made a commitment from their general fund to help with affordable housing related needs. About 1% of their general fund budget is dedicated to affordable housing. If Coralville can find some money to devote to families and other households who are not covered by these programs that are rolling out, it will make a real difference for your residents, for your workers, for the families your children go to school with. Um, these are our neighbors and they need our help. Um, we have about $195 million um, in rent and utility assistance coming. Coralville does not have to be out revenue by leaving people's water on. We're working right now to pull together a system that will help everyone to access the resources that are available. What we need from you is some grace and some support for these families who are struggling. You can make an easy decision to keep people's water on, to mobilize the resources that you have available as a city to help the people who have spoken tonight and others like them. Um, and I, I really um, urge and really more than urge, um, really, um, I, I, I feel like beg is the word. <laughs> I beg you to really hear and honor their voices and think about what the right thing is to do. Think about how you can step in where others have fallen short to make a difference and make Coralville stronger. Um, it's not the time to give up. We have to press forward and you can, you can act um, to do something really concrete. 
that can change people's lives. So please, please do. Thank you. Thank you. Mazi here, would you like to wrap it up here? Yes, you know, uh, before I can wrap it up, I have, uh, you know, one resident that she's really wanna talk, but she, for somehow she raising her hand and you are not seeing her. So she's on my phone now, she can just go ahead and talk. Arafa? Okay. Uh, I am Korobi's resident. I live in Kenya, Kenya. I'm a single mom of two kids. I work for a pair of the phone. About once the pandemic began, and during the summer, I lost my job. I couldn't find another job because I did not have anyone to help me take care of my kids. And I did not have any way to pay my utility, like water or electricity. I reached the point where the city of Coroville disconnects my water. I went to Center for Justice because they had funds to help people in Coroville. But while my application there, Coroville City connect the water before I said for I went to the PWG. I asked them if I could call the city of Korobiyo and share my one on. They did that immediately and I get my one back. While I was there, I asked and I talked to somebody in charge about this condition of war. Unfortunately, the guy he met me. He did not treat me good. He just sit down, listen to me, and he did not even feel my suffering. And I did to the boy benefit that year I left the city and I'm so so mad on that time. I would like to know what the city of Korobi can do to help many people. Like me in this situation. Thank you. Yes, you know, I really was here to uh, read the letter that I sent it to you, but I decided not to because you have it. You can read it. I, I really want to just tell you about, uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, uh, Mayor Bruta Mitcha and, uh, and High, Councilwoman High, told you about the meeting that we have with 40 people, because I cannot see how many people they show up here, all of them they try to join today, and even more than those people, they want you to join today. But since, you know, in your screen, I cannot tell if they are there or not, but I wanna just tell you that I receive a lot of messages that they try to join from their phone, and it tell them to enter a username, and something like that, you know, that technical difficulty that always happening with immigrants and people who cannot access, you know, the, the system. I guess it is really kind of a little hard to access even to, you know, to enter your meeting. Uh, you know, for people who th their language is not, the, the prime language for them is not English. So uh, I just want to tell you that there is many, many people from Coroville who would really love to be here. And I hope if everything is normal, so we can come just to the city hall and just talk to you direct and you talk to us direct. And so we can build a relationship. Hopefully this pandemic will go away and we come back again so we can see each other. And we can also build like some connection with the resident because the resident love to build those connection with their elected official. You know, on the letter, I mentioned that during the pandemic, we help Sixty family of Coroville for, and we spent around thirty-eight thousand dollar for Coroville residents to cover many needs, whether it's rent or electricity or water. Seven thousand of that went direct to pay water for the people, because we just like and the water is, is seven. That means seven thousand 
went direct to Coroville City. And 2,000 of that 7,000, we paid like direct by CWG check to the city of Coroville. I just want to tell you the need is great in Coroville. And there is a lot of people come to us, try to navigate, help. And we help even people to apply for IFA. We help over, uh, I think, in general, over 90 family to apply for IFA who has been approved for three months for the rent. I, I know that your population, population is not enough to get Fiddler Gland, I understand that, but I'm sure 100% you can figure it out. You can figure out this. You have general fund, you can think about those taxpayer. I hope this emergency go away as soon as possible. So we don't need to like continue funding people and helping them. But please, please, as Sarah Baron said, I beg you to look into this and help those residents. We resent, uh, from the Center for Worker Justice, we send a letter when we send it to all the city, uh, like from uh, when we create the program that we have it at the Center for Worker Justice called From My Home to Yours, where people donate their stillness check. But when we start running low, we send a letter to every government, county, cities. We did not hear from you. I know you are guys are busy. Maybe you did not come across our letter, but think about it again. And look at that letter and see how can together we help the people of Coroville because they are really, really in need. I think together with ongoing local support programs and government assistance, we can keep family warm, fed, and with a roof over their heads. Ed, thank you so much. And you know, looking forward to hear back from you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Basa here. And thank you to all the speakers tonight. Um, it was very enlightening. It's very touching to hear firsthand. I couldn't agree more that I wished we didn't have to do it on Zoom and we could uh, speak face to face. That would be a 100% better experience, but yeah, this is not the situation now, but we will trust us that we will um, message received and we have a number of budget meetings coming up before we finalize our budget. and. I'm sure that we'll have um, some good discussions about how we want to address this is these issues going forward. So thank you very much. Is there anyone else tonight that would like to speak to us on a different topic? Okay. Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the item seven, which is a fiscal year 2022 budget public hearing. Um, this will set the maximum levy hearing for the fiscal year 2022 budget as required by the state of Iowa. This hearing is an additional step in the budget process created by legislation passed by the 2019 legislative session. Um, I will open the public hearing and first ask if there's anyone here that uh, would like to speak to us. We did receive an email today from Rex Brandstetter on this topic, uh, but other than that, is there any other input? There are no other written comments and no one is present to speak on the matter. Okay. I'll close the public hearing then and consider the resolution. Resolution approving the total maximum property tax dollars for fiscal year 2022. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Any discussions or questions? Okay. Roll call. Gross. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Dodds? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Foster? Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Moving on, item number eight, anthropology tenant building, uh, built tenant build out. Um, this is for the tenant improvement work to be completed in a previously unoccupied space at 920 East 2nd Street, Suite 145 in the IRL. Uh, the bids for this project are due February 19th, but the first item is a public hearing on the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost and form of contract. 
for this. I'll open the public hearing. Are there any comments or were any received? No written comments were received. No one's present to speak on the matter. Okay. Thank you. I'll close the public hearing then and consider the resolution. Resolution approving the plan specifications, estimate of costs and form of contract for the anthropology tenant build out. Uh, introduced for adoption by council member Gross, seconded by. Second. Second by Huen. Any discussion? Roll call. Huen. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Okay, resolution is approved, all ayes. Item nine is the annual urban renewal report revised. Um, the city council is required uh, by house file 2640 to formally approve by motion the filing of an annual urban renewal report with the Iowa Department of Management. The original report was approved and accepted on November 24th, 2020. And this is an amendment to that. I would entertain a motion to approve and accept the annual urban renewal report for fiscal year 2020 revised. So moved. So Moved Second. by Gross and seconded by Foster. Does this need to be a roll call or just all? Nope. Okay. Just all, voice vote. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Passes all ayes. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item 10 Scanlon Farm, Farms, Southridge. <clears throat> this is a second consideration of an ordinance that to rezone a 3.49 uh, acre parcel on the east side of the North Liberty Road from RPUD1, Residential Plan Unit Development 1 District, to CPUD1, Commercial Plan Unit Development District. Uh, Don, the ordinance, please. Ordinance number 2021-1001, an ordinance amending the Coralville Zoning Ordinance, the same being ordinance number 664, as previously amended, rezoning certain property located within the corporate limits of the city of Corville, Johnson County, Iowa, and generally known as Scanlon Farms Southridge from RPUD1 Residential Plan Unit Development 1 District to CPUD1 Commercial Plan Unit Development 1 District, introduced for adoption second consideration by Council Member Wynn, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Any discussion or questions? Roll call. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Wynn. Aye. Second consideration of the ordinance passes all ayes. Item 11 is the West Ramp Waterproofing Project, which this item accepts the waterproofing on the IRL West Parking Ramp. Um, the retainage due in 30 days is $7,111.50. The resolution, please. Resolution accepting the West Brand, excuse me, West Ramp Waterproofing Project as completed. Introduced, adoption by Council Member Dodd, seconded by. Second. Second. Ooh, that was close. Uh, we'll give it to, to Foster. Roll call. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Resolutions approved all ayes. Item 12, we're gonna rename 4th Street. This will rename a portion of 4th Street that needs to be renamed to be consistent with the portion of the street already named Clark Drive in the Old Town Corville development. There are no properties or facilities addressed to this 4th Street uh, location. Don? Resolution changing the name of street now known as a portion of 4th Street located in Old Town Corville to Clark Drive, introduced for adoption by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Second by Gross. Discussion? Can you remind us, Clark? Yeah, Clark is in, uh, it's uh, obviously the old Clarksville was Corville's first name. And this is the, Clark Drive is this is uh, parallel to 5th Street, but it's south of 
it's in the old town development. It's the uh, East West Street that's uh, south of Fifth Street. And there was a little bit of it named Fourth Street that was still left on the map. So this is the cleanup. I was wondering about the history of Clark. Yeah, this is the original, the original Clarksville, and actually the one of the Clarks actually still owned one of these properties back in here, but when before this uh, project was completed, so. Okay. Anything else? Roll call. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Resolutions approved all ayes. Um, item 13, A, B, and C were deleted from the agenda, so we'll move on to <coughs> item 14. I consider a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented or amended. Thank you, Mayor. I'd ask the council to consider a motion to approve the consent calendar A through P inclusive. Okay, moved by Dodd, seconded by... Second. Second. Um, I'm, I'll give it to win. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Grace. Aye. Aye. Win. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Consent calendars approved all ayes. Item 14 is a city administrator's report. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I'd just like to um, note the passing of Dr. Ray Gill. Um, Dr. Gill was the first dentist in Coraville, so um, he just passed away this last week and um, uh, was very involved in the community. And what he, one of the things that um, Dr. Ray Gill was noted for is that he was on the Coraville School Board um, when the Coraville schools merged with the Iowa City School System, and he was one of the leaders in that whole process. So um, just like to remember him. Um, also, would just like to note that the Iowa City um, Coraville Convention and Visitors Bureau has been very hard at work. And they, during all of the stress and everything that's going on, they have um, worked on bringing three either Midwest or national um, sporting events to Coralville um, in the month of March. And so during this crazy time, they have continued to work with organizations to provide safe environments that um, people can still have their events in. And so I'd just like to note and thank them for all of their efforts. And that's all I have, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Uh, Mayor's report, I have four things, I believe. Um, first of all, I, I do want to um, emphasize, and it was this information was put out again yesterday, that the Coralville mayor's mask and social distance uh, mandates are still in effect. They're in effect till April 15th, unless conditions uh, are changed otherwise to, to alter that. Um, that's consistent with the city of Iowa City, North Liberty, and Johnson County. Um, I strongly encourage everyone to continue to, to mask up and, and do the other uh, proper things, wash your hands and social distance. Um, we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction, but now is not the time to let up. So um, please, 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 um, I wanna see those masks on everyone. Um, second item, um, I was gonna mention Dr. Ray Gill, but I won't because Kelly already did, but I also wanna mention the passing of um, of uh, Linda Peterson, who is Lynette Jacoby's mother. Uh, Lynette, of course, is uh, a friend of all of ours and also married to Dave Jacoby, former city council member and current state representative. And um, her mom, Linda Peterson, passed away this past week up in Rockwell City. So our condolences go out to both the Gill and the <coughs> um, Third thing is uh, this coming Monday is President's Day. And um, you can find more information on the city website, but essentially um, the library and city hall and the administrative uh, offices of the fire and police departments will all be closed. Um, the, the rec center is open and uh, buses will operate a normal schedule. Um, but there's more details on the website. And what I always like to do is to tell folks when there's a holiday on Monday, that means everyone's garbage will be picked up a day later. So Mondays will be on Tuesday, Tuesdays on Wednesday, and et cetera. So don't forget to, to move the, 
your garbage out a day later next week. And um, lastly, I just want to um, thank everyone. They, at least in my neighborhood, they seem to have really caught on and are doing a great job with um, sidewalk snow removal. Um, I didn't have anyone during these last several storms uh, to turn in. I have turned in other folks uh, previously, but the, the message is getting out there and really appreciate that, that people are, are being considerate of others and always try and um, dig out your hydrants if they have one near your home. Uh, we've been blessed that I don't think we've had any serious fires that I'm aware of anyway, but Cedar Rapids certainly has, so it, it could happen here. With that, I'll turn it over to the city attorney's report. I have nothing new, Kevin. I have nothing either. Okay, quiet from the city attorneys. Uh, committee and council members reports. Lori, we'll begin with you. Oh, you're muted. I have nothing tonight, thanks. No, oh, okay. Uh, Jill, you're next up on my screen. Okay, um, I just wanted to say thank you to you, Mayor, and to all of the leadership in Johnson County for maintaining the mask mandate. You all know how important that is to our safety. Um, and then I wanted to also put a shout out to our department heads and our city staff for what a good job on the budget that they did um, as the liaison on Parks and Rec. I know how much of a struggle it was uh, just for our department. So well done. I know it was a lot of hard work and big decisions. So thank you for making it easier for us to complete the job. That's it. Thank you, Jill. Hi, you're next, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have a few items. Uh, I would like to, um, on behalf of the, um, uh, the CCPA, <laughs> I always have to think how to abbreviate that. <laughs> the CCPA, um, I just had a meeting, so I just wanted to uh, let the public know that they are hosting um, the, their virtual theater workshop um, for the month of February, it is for grade um, second and third, um, and it's on the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd. So um, sign your kid up. Um, that's, that will be um, some fun, good things to do. Um, and then uh, I would like to remind resident that the uh, resident who own business um, that the grant to assist for restaurant and bar is is due soon. It's due the 15th. So you still still got a couple of days get the uh, application in. And just want to echo um, what the mayor said, really, really double down on the mask. Um, I work at the food pantry and, uh, you know, we are in the front line. And when you don't wear a mask and you use the IR service, just like any other essential services in our city, it's put us at risk and it's put other people at risk. So please, please just put on a mask. If you don't have one, ask for one. Chances are, any businesses out there will have one available for you to wear. Thank you. Thank you, hi. Megan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a few things. Uh, the, the first thing I have is a question and I just wanted to check up on the um, progress of the Police Citizens Review Board. I was just curious, um, where we're at in the process of establishing that and, and recruiting members for that um, for that board. Well, I'll let Kelly answer, but I, I'll first say that um, we just the list, last few days we've been working on an application form that I fabulous. I think I'll let Kelly give the details in terms of getting it out there. Yes. Um, yes, Mayor, we um, do have um, the application for all commission boards and commissions updated. Um, we added some information to that so that it makes it easier for the mayor and council to um, see some of the diversity that we're seeking. And so you would know whether individuals meet different um, categories. And so we will send that out to you tonight. If you could take a quick look at that application and see if there's anything you'd like to change. And then we'll also send you the uh, uh, one paragraph um, about the citizen review board that we'll be using in the press releases. But we are ready to send that out um, and would notify the two organizations that LULAC and um, NAACP for their representatives and then solicit the rest from 
the community and would encourage people that are interested to please let us know so that we can get you an application. And that is a 30 day process. So um, uh, please, uh, we will put it out in as many different ways as we can. And then if uh, council members can share that as well, but uh, please let us know um, as soon as you've had a chance to review that uh, updated application to see if you have any changes and then we'll get those out by the end of the week. Awesome, thank you so much for that update. I really appreciate it. Um, I just also wanted to, um, uh, this is the first meeting that we have had uh, in have had in February. So I just wanted to remind everyone that February is Black History Month. And I know there's a lot of great programming in the area, a lot of great um, information that's being shared on on social media about uh, our uh, uh, black leadership in the in the community that has really made a difference. Uh, I would encourage everyone to to check out some of those uh, programming opportunities. And I would like, you know, I know this year has been um, challenging and difficult, but I really would like to see Coralville offer some um, programming and some celebrations that that acknowledge um, Black History Month in the future. That would be fantastic. I know that um, the library has some great things that they're sharing and it, I would love to see more. Uh, that would be great. And then I just wanted to take a moment to, to thank all the citizens that came and spoke and um, shared your stories. Uh, you know, I, I know there was a, a meeting uh, last week. I apologize that I was not able to attend. I was actually working that evening. Um, I teach at, at the university and I was teaching a class that evening. So I was um, hoping to to get to meet with, with some of you, but I was not able to attend, but I, I am always available to meet with anyone um, in the future. I, I really appreciated hearing from, from all of you and I'm, I'm sorry that things are so hard and I'm sorry that it's been difficult. And I believe that we have to do better. We have to do better at connecting our citizens with the resources that they need. We need to do better at establishing a relationship with uh, the Center for Worker Justice. I also wanna thank Mayor Pro Tem Sully for, for organizing um, the, the citizens and, and having them join us tonight. I wanna thank Bijou for translating. And um, you know, we, we do, we are a great community and we are, we, are, we are not afraid to take on big challenges in Coralville. And, and I think that we can, you know, find ways we, we get creative a lot of the time when it when when it comes to taking on these big challenges. I'd like to to see if we can get find some ways to get some some um, funding to the Center for Worker Justice, some funding to uh, to and to help some of these uh, individuals um, because it is it's just a, it's a really really difficult time, and and the the folks that are suffering the most are in our community. And, and we, we need to help them. So again, I appreciate your courage in coming and I, I, I you know, I thank you. Um, thank you all for sharing your, your stories. And that is all I have. Okay, thank you, Megan and Mitch. Was that last because I didn't wear red? Mm -hmm. uh, all right. No, because you're last on my screen. I won't pick up right, any. No worries. No, a couple of things, first of all, uh, we did have a library board meeting this week, and I um, want to just make a few announcements about that. The library computer lab is open once again, uh, as is the library for browsing by appointment. So if you'd like to uh, be at the library, please make an appointment to do so. Uh, and the express computers uh, continue to be available as well. So if you, if you just need to use a computer real quickly for something. Um, and regarding reference, the library, and, and this is actually, I'm going to tie this into kind of what you just said, Megan, but... Um, they're, they're getting a lot of questions and requests about tax work. Uh, you know, doing taxes is a very complicated thing. So the library is so offering assistance with taxes. So please feel free to do that. And finally, February is also adult winter uh, reading month. Um, so you can sign up for that online and there's some prizes and things if you um, are able to uh, complete the, the task and the challenge. And you know, I, I want to say also to the folks that spoke, and I'm going to say, you know, merci de nous porter de vos attentions. And I, I say that because I, you know, having grown up the son of an immigrant and the son of someone who wasn't a citizen, 
I, I, I understand the challenge and it can be very, very difficult to navigate through uh, the bureaucracy and the government. I, I remember a story, or my story, when my mom was trying to become a citizen and the only way to make an appointment with immigration and naturalization was with the computer. You can only make your appointment online, but we didn't have a computer. I remember thinking how many, if the only way to make an appointment with immigration is with a computer, how many immigrants right now are having a computer? It was just, it's just a very cumbersome process. So I think that's one thing that, that we can do is find ways where we can make things easier for access for, for our residents. And, you know, I, I think that one of the things I took, and I, Hi and I were able to meet with the group, I believe last Thursday. And, um, you know, I'll be honest, it's the biggest community meeting I've ever had uh, you know, as a, as a counselor, you know, we had, you know, 50 some people, I believe showed up. And, you know, when I think about what, what they're asking for, first of all, it is just access. And the, the Congolese population and our French speaking population in this city, it's profound. And I think we've got to make an effort, an effort and, and just do and, and start producing our website in French, our publications in French, um, you know, that's why when I was just talking about the tax help, you know, that needs to be in French. Uh, citizens need to know uh, that don't speak English what, what we have to offer and what services we do have to offer. I was taken aback uh, a lot by the, the stories of residents having their water shut off. It, it just, it was a gut punch. There's, there's no way to say that any way than that. And, uh, you know, I, I hope very, very soon we can have this discussion. I know we were ahead of, ahead of the curve when the pandemic first started about um, water shutoffs and, and this or that, but I would hope we could do a moratorium right now and show you enough water. I, I do believe that, you know, there are things we, we all say, all five of us, uh, and I'll put the mayor in there too, you know, we're not Iowa City, we're not an entitlement city, we don't get the funding that they do, but there are things we do have some control over. Water is one of them, and I just don't think there should ever be a reason why we would shut water off on a family or an individual uh, in this case. I mean, it's a basic necessity, and I think that you know, if we need to have that done, that's a discussion we need to have at the council. But, but that's just one of the things I, I hope we can discuss. And and just lastly, I do appreciate um, the people coming forward to speak because it is it is scary. It is uh, it's an intense process to do. And I I think we've all got to do a better job of again of being accessible. And, and hopefully, when the pandemic passes, uh, we'll be able to do that. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. And I'll just say that. I'd like to think we've come a long way since your mom tried to sign up uh, using a computer, but apparently we haven't because the same thing with signing up for vaccinations. So many, many people aren't able to, to access computers to do that. Yeah, so. this was just 2003, so not that long ago when you really think about it. Yeah, wow. So, um, yeah, we'll, 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 we will certainly talk more about the water situation and so forth. There were I wasn't aware that there were that many shutoffs, to be honest. So. Mayor, can I have a second chance? Oh, yes, I guess, since you didn't say anything the first time. <laughs> I know, I just want to shout out to our great streets department and all the snow removal, mm -hmm. all the work that our uh, employer, employees and people around the city that have had to do out in this freezing cold. We really appreciate it, thanks. Yep. Well, well said, Laurie. Everyone, police, fire, streets, everybody has to work outside. Yep. Okay, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Gross, seconded by? Second. Second. Um, was that you, Megan? I know it was Jill, but somebody got in ahead of you. Give it to Jill. Okay, seconded by Dodds. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye.